This is my 72 volt Razer MX500 built from scratch. You've seen the crazy builds online, but is it actually worth the time and money? Today, I'll show you everything I've learned and whether you should even build one. Many people decide to build these bikes. Seems simple enough. Take a cheap razor, throw in a big motor kit, and boom, instant emoto, but cheaper and faster than your typical Suron. That's exactly what I thought too. Tons of YouTubers make it look easy, but what they don't show is how many things can break along the way. I ended up buying my MX500 brand new, rode it for a few days, and then added on the 5000 watt Electro & Co kit. This was the older V2 kit, so it was not as refined, and is made with older Electro & Co parts, not the newer 3.0 stuff. This is right where all the issues started. It was fast, but stuff quickly started to go wrong. The stock suspension? Shoot, maybe it's good for a 9 year old. But for anything sort of off road, or even small jumps, it just bottoms out instantly. I ended up upgrading to these ride or die forks, and then paired them with this DNM burner in the rear. They both work fine, but there's not really any adjustability. Then came the brakes, and man, was this part a pain. I bought about 7 different brake setups before I found anything that actually fit. Either they didn't mount up, nope. or the fitment wasn't very good. A lot of people online say you need to make a custom mount, but I don't have any experience in that type of fabrication. I eventually threw on some cheap mountain bike hydros. They work, but they're sketchy for wheelies and stopping quickly. I now know that Ride or Die has a kit I can get. This for a pretty good deal, and I'm probably going to ha have to get those soon. And just when I thought I had most of the bugs worked out, I ran into the freewheel issue. I'd heard people online say they can go bad, but it never got to it until it broke and there was no power to the rear wheel. This thing was stuck solid on the hub. No tool could get it off, not even a breaker bar. So I had to take a Dremel, slice the freewheel, and pry it off just to get it unstuck. It was a total nightmare. Luckily, I didn't ruin the threads, and I was able to screw on a new welded freewheel instead, which was way more reliable. This made it less like a bicycle and more like a real dirt bike. But yeah, another day, another fix. After riding for a few months, my rear tire was pretty much completely bald. This was from street riding, dirt riding, and of course, doing way too many burnouts. I didn't want to just throw on another stock tire. It had to be something that could actually last. It had to work on street and dirt. I ended up going with a dual sport tire for the rear. To balance the look, I put the same style up front. I didn't want a skinny in the front and a chunky in the rear. And then, you guessed it, I ran into another problem. The rear tire didn't fit with the stock swing arm. So I decided to install a Midwest Mini Mod swing arm. You may be asking, why won't you just get a different tire? And to be honest, I probably should have done that, but all the other tires were too skinny, so I just did the Shinkos. It was also different than all other people's builds, with only dirt or street tires. Not only did the new swing arm give me clearance, but it actually improved how the bike rode. It was a little less sketchy and more stable. It also deleted the chain tensioner and replaced it with proper axle blocks. I needed a new rear shock for this setup too, which was fine, because the DNM wasn't that great. 
This pit bike one is so much beefier, and you can actually adjust its settings. I went with the setup instead of extensions because it's cheaper, stronger, and cleaner overall. The only real downside? No kickstand. But honestly, I never really needed one. After all this, the build was pretty much done. I added some cosmetic and functional things like the battery covers, seat cover, ODI plate, and of course, my own custom decal to finish it off. So after everything, the money, the time, the tools, and all the trial and error, was it worth building a 72 volt Razer MX500? Honestly, for me, it's a yes and no. It was fun, but also super stressful at times. I learned a ton. It was a solid intro into the custom emoto world, but it was also a total money pit. Especially if you're buying more premium brands and popular brands. The only problem though, was that if you didn't always do this, and you tried to do it your own way, it was significantly harder. If your goal is to get something fast and rideable, you're probably better off buying something like an ETM RTR. It's more safe, reliable, and there's no guesswork. These can actually off-road way better if you want them to. But if you want to build one, or you're like I was, hungry to ride and wanting a bike, I would strongly suggest you do your research first. You can definitely learn a lot. If you still end up building a Razor, just know. You're probably going to break some stuff. You're going to wait on parts. But I'd recommend building off a Prospec model. They're made for modding, and you won't need to cut or fabricate as much. It may not be as nearly as cheap or easy as it looks at first, but in the end, it can be worth it. If any of you are wondering how a build like this stacks up against a real dirt bike in a similar class, or even a Suron, make sure you stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.